Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Choose Only One Work By, it would have to be. So who's it by? Well, it's by Bach. And the work in question, oh my goodness, so many suggestions I've gotten from all of you, from the Well-Tempered Clavier, to the B Minor Mass, to the St. Matthew Passion, to the Magnificat, to a bunch of cantatas, to a whole bunch of things. Strangely enough, there have been very few suggestions of the work that I have chosen. And that's odd. I mean, I really was <clears throat> expecting many more votes for this, but here it is. It's the Goldberg Variations. Now, why did I pick the Goldberg Variations? I know there's a big argument for Bach as a composer of vocal music and sacred music particularly, because that's basically what he wrote. Well, that's why I left it out, because I, I don't think that Bach as a vocal music composer, even though he did a lot of that, was noteworthy in the same way that like Handel was noteworthy as somebody who really had it for the voice. Now, I understand that something like the B minor mass, which I really seriously considered, I really, really did, um, you know, because it's one of those encyclopedic works that sums up everything he felt he could do in the realm of choral music. So I, I get that. And and uh, there's an argument to be made without without a doubt for the B minor mass, except that, except that I just think that Bach was first and foremost a, a keyboard artist. I mean, I could have chosen organ music. I mean, he was a keyboard guy. That is an argument, of course, for the well-tempered clavier as well. But the problem with the well-tempered clavier is that it's, you know, 48 pieces, even if you do all of them, both books, that are all the same form. Prelude, fugue, prelude, fugue, prelude, fugue, prelude, fugue, prelude, fugue, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I, that, I think the, the god Cancrazans, who has to listen to all this stuff to decide whether or not to destroy the universe as we know it, musically speaking, um, you know, I, I, I may run the risk of being a little bored, frankly. And so, you know, not that you can't listen to it in bits, in dribs and drabs, but, you know, it, it, it doesn't have the variety. But the Goldberg Variations, well, it's kind of special. First of all, it is also one of Bach's encyclopedic works. It's everything that he could do with variation form. It has the contrapuntal element, the canons at every third variation. It has the element of virtuosity, which we always seem to ignore when it comes to Bach. But Bach was a fabulous keyboard virtuoso. And his music is difficult. It's all difficult because he really didn't care whether people could play it or not, <laughs> as long as he could, and he could play anything. So, so I, I think that we have to have something that has a brilliance to it. I also think that Bach had something of a sense of humor. He had a sense of fun. He, it has an emotional depth that is extraordinary for instrumental music of the period. It really does, because you know, the sad minor key variations are really deeply moving and chromatic and creepy and slithery and dark. And the, the happy ones are just jolly. The quod libet at the end has Bach inviting us into his home to meet the family and eat their lousy food. I mean, you know, there, there's, there's just, in terms of expressive range, it's just about bigger than anything else he wrote, certainly bigger than any other instrumental piece he wrote. And so um, I, I really think that the Goldberg Variations is a wonderful choice. Also, we have to remember, it's got to be his most popular piece. I mean, uh, big work. I mean, you know, there are tunes, right? Like, you know, Jay's Who Joy of Man's Desiring or you know, stuff like that. But I mean, in terms of large works, there isn't anything he wrote that's more popular. I mean, every major pianist since Glenn Gould has recorded the Goldberg Variations. They've recorded it in in piano versions, they've recorded it in, in harpsichord versions, in clavichord versions, in organ versions, in string trio versions, in orchestrated versions. I mean, it's been everywhere. And that brings up the final sort of the clincher, the thing that clinched it for me. And that's this. I, I understand the argument for Bach's vocal music, I really do, but Bach as a composer was not a composer for whom medium was was the big deal most of the time. In other words, his music exists almost in an abstract kind of formal realm. I mean, Bach treated it that way. 
he arranged the orchestral pieces as choruses, concerto movements as, you know, choruses as solos and things that, you know, the music had this sort of essential musical, contrapuntal, figured bass, universal reality. And it almost made no difference whatsoever what he arranged it for, whether it was vocal or instrumental or anything else, because the, the musical fundamentals were the same, no matter what. I mean, it, it just didn't make any difference. And so I, I wanted to find a piece that was universally respected and revered, popular, that didn't have any barriers to enjoyment for Kankrazans, who, you know, was his Latin is very fuzzy. You know, the god Kankrazans was never, I mean, yes, he's a god, he could, he supposedly is omniscient. Okay, maybe he knows Latin. That doesn't mean he likes it. And that doesn't mean he likes to hear it sung. I wanted something that was so quintessentially Bach-like, you know? I mean, there are lots of cantata masses, even if Bach's is the biggest and best of them. I don't know, it's a zillion cantatas, but there's only one Goldberg variations. There is nothing like it. It's one of the three great sets of keyboard variations, or four, maybe four or five. You could, I would add Reich's L'Art du Varier to Beethoven's Diabellis and Zhevsky's The People United Will Never Be Defeated, and then that. I mean, but basically you can count them on the fingers of one hand. And the Goldberg Variations is the first, one of the absolute greatest, maybe the greatest, if you want to like judge things that way, which I think is sort of silly, but you can. And so that is my Bach piece. Nobody but Bach could have done it. Nobody could have written a piece of such range and variety and character and virtuosity and, and intelligence. And exp it just, it just, it's all there in that, in that one marvelous piece. And there's so many versions to enjoy. So if, if Ken Krasanz decides to preserve the Goldberg Variations as the single work of Bach, we're going to have a billion recordings to compare. <laughs> I mean, the discography is just huge. It's enormous. There's a million wonderful artists who will also be preserved, and that's worth considering too, I think. So keep on listening, friends. Keep your suggestions coming. I really appreciate them. And as always, the list is down below of where we're up to now. So thanks so much for joining me. Take care.